Hello, good morning, everyone. It's so, so lovely to have you here. Um, I'm Lucy, CEO at Strive. Thank you so much for turning up this morning. Um, I'm really pleased to be back and seeing so many new and returning faces. I can see everyone just filtering in now. Hello, hello. Um, whilst we're waiting for everyone to filter in, it would be so great to have your support today. The more energy we can get from the chat and Q&A features, the better. Claire and Amy are here to share their journey, um, but they're also happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, the Q&A chat are below. You can access them just in the um, buttons below our videos. So go ahead, um, take a minute just now and introduce yourselves in the chat. Make sure to switch your message to everyone just to make sure that we as admins aren't the ones getting your messages. Please do tell us where you're from, what your role is, um, maybe the size of your organization as well. And if there's anything in particular that you want to get out of your session, pop it in the chat now. It would be really, really lovely to hear from you. The chat is a great place to make connections. Oh, the chat's disabled. Brilliant. Thank you for flagging that. Let me just um, pop that on. Zoom has changed their settings so that for some reason its default is off. That's now enabled. So please now go ahead and introduce yourselves. Um, pop your job roles, what you want to get out of the um, webinar today, and also um, kind of where you're from as well. It'd be really, really lovely to hear from you. Um, like I said, the chat is a really great place to make connections and network. So please do make full use of it throughout the webinar. Um, the Q&A also has an upvote feature. Um, if we do get a lot of questions, we'll make sure to answer the ones that have the most votes. So please, please do get questions in early and make sure you're voting the ones you like the look of. Um, we really do have value having this as a conversation and you are the most important part of that. So please do make sure you're making the most of these features. If you are new here to Stripe, hello. Um, we are employee engagement survey software that is built to make help you make kind of the best possible employee surveys and to reach everyone wherever they work. We're really, really focused on ensuring that dispersed and deskless workforces have an opportunity to have their voice heard too. And this makes sure that you get great responses every time and that you're making change that represents everyone. We help you understand how your team are feeling around topics such as mental health, well-being, employee belonging and more. And we've had a really, really amazing response to this webinar with so many of you keen to hear how you can turn best practice into actions that truly influence employee engagement within your teams. Getting the most. Um, OK, so let's jump in. Sorry, I'm getting in a tangle already today. Those of regulars will know that I'm very good at doing that on these webinars. <laughs> um, so let's jump in. Our guests today are the wonderful Claire and Amy. Claire is director at DateSand and Amy is DateSand's business administrator. Together, they've built DateSand's employee engagement strategy into what it is today. What really struck me when we began working with DateSand at Stribe is the human element that drives absolutely everything they do. They also take a really keen focus on small changes that add up to much bigger impacts. It's these two things that I believe are just a couple of the reasons why they have achieved huge success when it comes to employee engagement, well-being and diversity and inclusion. Today, we're gonna to be doing a pure Q&A. I have some questions prepared, but remember we're here for you. I'm not gonna stop emphasizing this. So please do drop your questions into the Q&A box as and when you have them. They don't need to be related to what we're discussing. If you're looking for help or guidance on something else, do pop it in and we'll try and prioritize your questions as early as possible. So that's my introduction done and I couldn't be more excited to start getting, um, to get started with our incredible guests. So first off, Claire and Amy, um, please do just introduce yourselves and then feel free to give us an overview of DateSand, its mission and the employee engagement journey you've been on so far. Amy, would you like to go first? Yeah, yeah. So, hi, I'm Amy. I am the business administrator at DateSand. Um, so, I do a lot of like the HR admin side of stuff here. Uh, I'm a mental health first aider, a first aider, and lots of other admin involved uh, work for my role. Yeah. So, I'm Claire Wood. Hello. Uh, happy to be here today. Thanks for inviting us on. Um, I'm the director at DateSand. Um, we are based in Stockport in the Northwest. We've been uh, trading since 1980. We're a wholesaler business supplying into the medical research sector. So it is very niche. I wouldn't expect anybody really to recognize the, the company name. It is a niche sector. 
We are a team of just 30 people, so we're small. We're hoping to turn over 8 million at the end of the financial year. So that gives you a bit of an idea of the size of, the, of us. We are a market leader in our field, in our industry. Uh, we've got ISO accreditation, including ISO 45003, which is the global standard for health and well-being. So we're really proud to have that. We are members of the Good Employment Charter. I can see we've got somebody online today from them. We're big, big um, uh, supporters of the Good Employment Charter and what they do. They've really helped us a lot and um, they are looking to raise standard across, standards of businesses across the, the North West for employees and make better workplaces. So uh, um, I can uh, really um, uh, enjoy working with them. We're award winners for Best for Health and Wellbeing and last year we won Best for Employee Engagement. Uh, so that's really great to have those things recognised. You know, we're working in our own business, trying to do the right thing. So to get external recognition was really lovely for us and our people. Uh, the departments, to give you an idea of who sort of the departments that we have, we've got HR, finance, we've got a warehouse here, little production team, we've got a marketing team, supply chain logistics um, and a dispatch team. So there's quite a broad number of departments. Um, our mission is to deliver exceptional products and services to support the vital scientific sector. Uh, we're using business as a force for good and helping to improve the lives of people whilst caring for the planet. So that's quite some mission. Um, hopefully that gives you an idea of what we're about. <laughs> it's <laughs> brilliant. Really, really detailed. Thank you. And what kind of um, projects and priorities are you kind of focusing on currently working on? Um, I think um, the, the main thing for us is we're in a sort of um, competitive environment. Um, you know, we're trying to um, maintain our engagement strategy, work on that, get it embedded in the, in the business. So whatever happens in the future, you know, that will go on. Um, we're looking at 100% customer retention in the UK. We're striving for growth through international business. We can only achieve this with the service levels, the high service levels, which come from your people. So employee engagement is really key to our success. We're trying to um, get all of the tenders that we submit, uh, you know, that's quite competitive. We're trying to make sure we win all of those. Uh, a lot of business in the US is good for us. That's what we're pushing for. We've always had a caring culture and we look after our people and we know that happy people are productive and they deliver great service. and. Our customers um, have told us 99.6 of them would recommend us. So we know we're doing the right things. So we need to maintain that and, and, and hold on to that. And protecting our culture is really important to us as well. We've got really clear comms between everybody at the business um, to make sure that people continue to have their voices heard so that everyone can contribute to the success of the business. Uh, so engagement is a continuous improvement area for us. It's it's a lot of pet, plate spinning, isn't it? Uh, retaining your, your business, growing your business, looking after your people. So there are a few things that we're focusing on. Yeah. Just a few. <laughs> Just a few. You guys must be busy. 99.6% um, of customers wanting to recommend you is an unbelievable statistic. And, you know, we hear a lot about how... Um, like happy employees feed into happy customers and that feeds into kind of good business um and I would really just love to hear about kind of your employee engagement journey so far um you know we would all love to hit that kind of statistic at some point in the future and it would be really amazing to hear how that's kind of started and how you saw that employee engagement journey kind of feed into that um, sure sure we're, we're a family-run business and that always doesn't have positive connotations, does it, with some people. Families aren't always brilliant. Uh, in this case, we do our best and we're trying to put people first and do the right thing. So it's always been uh, close to our hearts, even when we're a small business with a with a number, of, uh, you know, a low number of people. Uh, high engagement is important to us and the levels of retention are good. We've got minimal absence and high levels, high levels of retention as well. Um, so it's only really more recently that we've formalised the engagement strategy, if you like, and that for us covers all areas of the business. It's through um, how we communicate, training programmes, leadership training. We use uh, CIPD, ACAS, the Growth Hub, for those that know who the Growth Hub are. are. Uh, we'll focus a lot on R&R &R and recognising 
when people are doing a good job, we make sure we tell them and we do it in a timely way. And that's really valuable uh, for us. Work life balance is really important. We're not a cutthroat company, which makes people stay late. We, we would be asking why you're staying late and what can we do to support you? Why, why you're still here every night until seven or whatever. So work life balance is, in, is, is important. We don't encourage people to stay late. Flexible working, hybrid working, all those things are really key, aren't they, in this day and age. And so we do what we can to look at individuals and their roles. And if we get asked for these things, we look at them. And of course, you have to do that from, from day one of somebody working with you now. Health and wellness is a strong one for us, um, including financial wellness. That's another one with a cost of living crisis. We've looked at that. We've got a strategy in place. Team building events, social events, community work, volunteering, regular surveys we carry out and from the regular survey obviously it's action that's what's needed so we're looking at action plans what we need to put in place and having an inclusive culture having psychological safety and employee satisfaction is really important so all of these things we've got better at it over the years as we've grown and it's what people employees should be looking for when they're going to start a company they should be asking these questions what what are your policies what have you got in place um, so we're in a really good place. We're doing a lot of good work and it's, as I've said, filtering through to customers, which is the acid test really, isn't it? Our employees are telling us that they're happy and that's the customers are seeing that and feeding back to us a lot of the values that we're sort of nurturing in people. They're feeding that back in the survey and telling us, you know, by name, you know, Fred is great at this, Charlie is excellent at that and they're, and they're feeding back these values. Uh, to us so that's really powerful yeah and that's one thing I think that um in all of this I've always picked up with working with you um at date sand is that you're super values driven and you know all of the amazing things that you've just mentioned you could be doing those over and over again and if they aren't aligned to values it can be really difficult to have that um kind of embedded in the long term so I'd be really interested to hear um if you could share some more kind of specific strategies or initiatives that you've put in place that really strengthens the way that employees kind of live and breathe those values. Um, I, can, I can, I think one of our, um, what, what we've needed to go to our people and say, you know, what values are important to you? What, how do you want us to work together? Um, and you can see the, the date sand way there, I think sharing um, is something that we did in, collaboration with 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 everybody in the team so um we established the date sand way written by our team it's a moral compass really and it's our agreed behaviors you can see their cooperation kindness and things like that come come to light integrity professionalism these are simple but very important values and they've helped us to achieve our goals while staying true to our values and it's very simple it's reviewed regularly and it's done in conjunction with the team. So everybody owns these, we've all bought into them, we've all signed up to them. Um, and how we do what we do is really important because it's a competitive industry. We're not you know, matching on price, we're looking at everything above that, all the extras, how we do what we do is really important. Um, authentic and supportive leaders, leading by example is key. The leaders have such an impact on, on your people, don't they? And getting the right authentic leaders in place who are emotionally intelligent, who aren't just, you know, they know the job, but they know people as well. Um, so we use these values and behaviours throughout the business as part of our interview process, right through to recruitment, um, quarterly reviews, annual appraisals. And we have a regular whole business team meeting where we're talking about these and reminding people what we've signed up to and what behaviours you want to see um and, and what our expectations of one another really uh, they're also embedded in our reward and recognition scheme so um you can um you know if someone's done something really innovative you can attribute that r and r to that value which is really powerful it pulls right through to the through the business um and the other flip side to it is protecting these values we've all signed up to it we've got a great culture here an open culture so if we're giving people permission to um, protect these big behaviours and address anything that isn't in line with this. So if you see something or hear something, we're giving people permission to um, address it in the right way, uh, but not let things uh, fester to call out any behaviours that aren't in line with this. And that's the flip side, and that's really important, not accepting 
any behaviours that aren't in line with this. And because we've all signed up to it, we'll, you know, it's it, it works well, works well for us. We also do a lot of um, shadowing that takes place. So that's where it's not only when you start with the business, but throughout your time with us, um, it helps people to work in a different area of the business. So, you know, if I'm processing orders, it's good for me to see how they're picked, packed and dispatched, let's say. Um, and you can see how your role fits in with your colleagues and what's important to them. And it's not just what we do, it's how we do it. Uh, so that helps with collaboration and, and appreciation of the different departments. So we pride ourselves on there's no us and them. We're one team, there's not, you know, your, your customer service team and, you know, bad mouthing back office or warehouse. We're all one team. And it's important that people have an appreciation with what others do in the business and why they need, you know, to have information in a certain way and, and and things like that. So that helps the collaboration and the the goodwill and the the teamwork, I think, between everybody. Amy, have you got anything you want to add to that? Because I know you've got some really good examples of kind of um, how those values are really living every day. Yeah, so um, within the dates and way, um, these were written by the team. So uh, we had like a workshop um, down in down in our breakout area um, where everybody had the chance to get involved and review um, whether or not, you know, um, re basically review which ones are still valid, which ones need updating, um, what ones do we need to implement and you know, basically uh, ensure everybody was on the same page. So um, we chose and discussed which values are important to us and why. Um, and we more, most recently added sustainability to our dates and way, which wasn't on there before. Um, and the way that we did that was we sort of had different groups of people um, to discuss a potential um, new values we could add to the dates and way. Um, and in which case, um, we had a lot of, um, in terms of those different groups, um, we had people brainstorm new new ones we could add in. Um, and following that, we actually had quite a few groups that had come up with sustainability as one of them. Um, and it, it was one of them that we didn't think that potentially we'd all be on the same page, but we were. And it was one thing that we could then follow and say, you know what, yeah, let's add that on there. And, and we just, just tweaked it, didn't we? And just made it made it part of the part of the date somewhere oh that's awesome it's sometimes these really simple um kind of initiatives just sitting down talking about things that that really have have the most impact um i will stop sharing this now so that you guys can see us properly um so i think we've kind of covered off that but um kind of coming from that um Kind of simplicity and do, and doing doing things. Could you share some examples of successful employee engagement strategies? Um, some that have been particularly effective at dates and I know you guys have, um, like Claire explained at the start, some quite a dispersed and diverse workforce, which I can see from everyone joining today. There's a quite a few folk that will be in a similar situation to you. So it'd be lovely to hear kind of some really successful examples of of what you've put in place. Yeah. Um. So. Um. We have, obviously we've got the health and wellbeing strategy, uh, the financial and the financial wellbeing strategy, um, which has been very successful at Data Sand actually, um, because we recognise all humans have, you know, life happens. Um, so it, you know, we have to, we have to ensure that everybody's supported within the workplace as well as home life. Um, so uh, we did, we've done an employee survey, which led to the implementation of some valuable supportive elements, such as access to a financial advisor. Um, we had a financial adv advisor come into the workplace um, and anybody who wanted to speak to them could do. Um, we also have wage stream, uh, Manchester Credit Union, yoga, um, and then um, prepayment meter loans, as well as signposting as well. So we do have quite a, a you know, a lot of, different things that we can cover that to make sure that we are supporting everybody. Um, and then uh, we've got uh, regular one-to-ones. So um, we ask people uh, within the one-to-ones to score themselves on a one to 10 um, 
sort of scale um, and within home, self and work. So they can score themselves, you know, a seven, eight at home, seven, eight at self and then the same at work. And it gives us an indication on, um, you know, how they're feeling at home versus how they're feeling at work to see whether we can do anything about that and how we can help them within that. Um, and that includes uh, the senior leadership team as well. So we do that with the senior leadership team. Nobody's left out. We make sure everybody is covered and we, we, we absolutely help everybody. And But it just, yeah, it just gives better support for our people uh, in the workplace. Um, we also have uh, great social opportunities as well. So um, these are chosen by the team. Um, so it could be volunteering, charity fundraising, um, and which obviously also fosters a sense of purpose and community as well. So, um, and we also encourage anyone from anywhere in the business. So it could be someone that's a home worker or someone that works out in the warehouse and dispatch area. And we make sure that everybody is, you know, asked and, you know, can be involved if they want to be. Um, and then um, with the wellbeing calendar, we've also got, um, and that just sort of, we sort of try and do something once a month. Um, and if we don't do something once a month, it might be a case of just sending out a communication to everybody for a specific month to say, you know, this is um, a specific day of, of the year um, encourage people to have a look on that topic um, and just make create awareness for certain things because um, there potentially might be somebody at home that they've got that they can relate to for that topic, if that makes sense. Um, so it's not just about you as a person who work, but also your home life as well. And somebody may know a friend, family member, children, whatever it might be. Um, so, yeah, so we do that as part of the uh, wellbeing calendar. But we also do stuff like um, photo competitions. So we might say, you know, it's um, so we did one, I think it was in April and it was um, photos of nature competitions. So we got everybody to go out, encourage everybody out in the just outside, get some fresh air and um, encourage that to walk and you know just take it all in and, and submit a photo to uh, the wellbeing calendar and then from that we had people vote on their favorite photo you won that didn't you i did win that yeah that was a <laughs> it wasn't a mix it wasn't a We're mix we've got in the <laughs> office now you see so that's been <laughs> Oh, yes, we've that's done it so before. nice. Yeah, it yeah. Doesn't cost a lot, but it gets people. Exactly, it gets people to enter. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so we've now got that on the wall. So, we're trying to do that every year so that we can sort of have like a bit of a wall of canvas pictures where people can kind of like a little exhibition that they can contribute towards. Um, and then we do stuff like team walks. So, we always try and encourage that every few months, don't we? Um, and then we've got like stuff that we've done, such as um small activities coffee and um coffee and cake hour where we'll do like a bit of a quiz get people down in the breakout and just um have an hour you know free from work and just just do something different um and then we've also we also do stuff like pot painting and stuff so we these are chosen by the team so we'll put out a couple of suggestions um and then we'll see what people are voting for most and we'll do that that thing so um we've done pot painting axe throwing canoeing uh, we did Street recently diving. skydiving we did last year yeah um yeah that was that was crazy wasn't it yeah and um, and then uh bought a monastery vis visit as well so that was more about the history side of it and, and what it was all about so that there was quite a few people that did that one actually yeah, it was nice, so really. yes um and then example we've got another example of continuous improvement so um continuous improvement is one of our strengths anything that can be that can save time or money or quality or service for example uh, we link these improvements directly to the dates and weighing values so um for example i i've been here two years now but um after my after i started i i saw sort of like a bit of a gap where we could improve our new starter process so um i created the new starter pack which um was suggested um, by me to one of the SLT team and then I had one of the marketing guys help me with it so we just kind of put stuff together so when people started all the information was in one place so that would be say from uh, information on the pension information on the healthcare that we provide here um, the health and well-being um, signposting that we've got um, it had a, a financial well-being as well so it had wage, wage stream credit union and all that kind of stuff in there but it also had like sections of the team. So it had individual photos of everybody. 
with their name, their email address, um, so that you could easily figure out who is who rather than not knowing who everybody is, you've got it in the book. Um, but also as well, we had even even just sort of like the map of the area. So we have like where you can go and get food and um, what's around the area, what's nearby, what transport can you use um, and all that kind of stuff with the, also a map of the of the workplace as well. So where the dispatch area is, where the warehouse is, where the toilets are, where you can have lunch and that kind of stuff. Um, so that was really, really useful for one of the new starters actually that just started recently and they found that really useful. Um, it's, it's looking at the um, employer experience, isn't it? We look yeah. at the customer experience, but right from the outset, from when, when somebody comes in for an interview, we're well aware that they're choosing whether they want to work with us. It's not just us deciding if you're right for us. So to get that polished and right, that great uh, setting the right standard from the beginning is important. And that's a brilliant example there of where we've got this feedback and said, yeah, actually, we've, we've, we've not looked at that closely enough. Um, and there's a budding system now that was suggested. So it's OK having your line manager to, to talk. But early on in a company, it's quite nice to have that person you can say, hey, I've got a silly question. Uh, you know, and, and have that. So it's buddy, buddies and we've made a lot of changes, haven't we? That's it. Rather than asking, you might be too scared to ask your manager. I mean, not that oh, you would well. be here, but, uh, you know, with other cultures and other workplaces, it might not yeah. necessarily be the same as, as here. So it's like someone might be a bit, you know, unsure of what to ask their manager. So with the buddy and system, it's like you don't have to speak to the manager about it. You can go speak to your buddy about it. And then... um obviously you may get a better answer it, it doesn't matter what, what question it is um but it, it seems to make people feel a bit more comfortable asking just you know someone that they might work with on the team or someone from the warehouse um yeah and then with reward and recognition as well we've got we've got that so that is linked to our values um and desired behaviors for people who have gone above and beyond so um we have multiple ways to recognize this we also obviously do it through stride um we have the stride shout outs which is brilliant um and then we have our personal hub as well and um that is a way that where someone could suggest an, a reward and recognition gift alongside of what they've done um but with stride it's it's um it's a way of it's basically more professional because we used to we only used to record it sort of manually and we didn't really have like a way of of doing it you know professionally and where everybody could see it so before manually you wouldn't see everybody's award and recognition or shout outs because it would be directly to that person or to a manager to that person whereas with stride you can see it on on the shout out page and everybody is able to see someone's hard work um, it's really nice because then it, it encourages people to to see what they've done and everybody can praise that person. And it's just a really good way to engage everybody. Um, and it's worked really well, actually. Mm. It's awesome. Especially for you guys as well, because I know you are dispersed. You've got some teams in head office, some teams in the warehouse. So I guess even um, at the best of times, they're not going to necessarily hear about um, particular kind of shout outs unless you do have that central place for yeah, them. It is. That, that's one of the benefits, really. It doesn't matter where you are. You know, you've got it on your phone. You can quickly um, give a shout out. And, and now it's it's quite common practice. You'll hear somebody's telling you how good one of the one of the colleagues have done. And the first question is, well, have you put it on Stripe? Have you done a shout? Well, I haven't actually. Well, let's get... <laughs> no good telling me. It's great that you're telling me, but make sure they know and that and it, it does warm your heart you read some of them and we've got a really lovely great team of people and they're and they're bigging each other up and saying well done and recognizing it and it's really lovely to see really nice yeah um there was so many amazing examples that you gave kind of throughout and apologies this little black thing is my cat that's just joined in um <laughs> she was missing out on <laughs> all of the information that you guys were giving. So she wants to be front and center too. Um, <laughs> so um, they, yeah, you mentioned so many kind of amazing initiatives there. And again, coming back to that, like very small changes that add up to make a big difference. Um, 
And there was a lot of different kind of points, um, Amy, through those couple of examples that you mentioned, um, getting feedback from employees and making sure they were shaped around employees. And I've noticed Catherine's just sent a question that asked about kind of what channels do you have for allowing employees to have their voices heard? And I thought that would be a really lovely point just to bring that question in. And, um, you know, you could share maybe a little bit about how that's structured it at Date Sand. Yeah, I mean, we've got 30 people, so, you know, we hope we're all approachable. The, the line managers are approachable, the leaders are approachable, that's important. So we're busy, we're about the business, we're walking through the business, so we're talking to people all the time. That's really important. So I'd prefer for people to just raise things and feel that they can, you know, uh, shouldn't have to wait for a survey or anything like that. So if you've got psychological safety, people can suggest things put things forward then I, I hope you you know people can do that in the business but in terms of formally doing it then we do it through you know we always start with 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 surveys trying to find out where people are at where are they starting from um and, and feed in that way obviously there's email there's stride and they can do that anonymously through stride we can talk about a bit about that that's one of the challenges isn't it anonymity and it you know <laughs> is it really anonymous and, and things like that um so there's lots of routes that people can suggest things and feed things in but the surveys are the formal ones that we do so we'll do annual surveys and smaller pulse surveys in between hopefully that answers that question it does it does thank you um and obviously kind of I think, you know, you've mentioned you're a small team, but you have spoken about how much you're doing at the moment. And I think one of the things and kind of the purpose of the the survey, the, the survey, the webinar today is kind of to talk about how you can kind of do more with less. And I think it would be really interesting if you could share kind of some of the challenges that you faced um, in creating and implementing these strategies and kind of maybe how you overcame them. Yeah, I can say that one. Um... We've talked about health and well-being. It's obviously really strong here and really important, and it's added so much value and helped everybody. Um, and I think the thing with that is not every it's not everyone's cup of tea, health and well-being. You know, I might be really passionate about it, but I don't expect every single person here to be. So that's not to be offended if some people just don't want to engage with you on that. That's fine. Everyone's different. So um, you know, not to overdo the comms. You know, you can start off really enthused. You've got this strategy. You've got the survey, and you've you've delivered these things, and you you you're throwing out things on health and well-being each day. Tips, drink water, get the steps in. You know, mindful or whatever it is. Some people I would switch them off. So it's just being a bit careful with how much and how often. I would say, uh, no one wants to be inundated with these tips and and things. So. Careful what you share, have a strategy around your comms. I suppose the more people you have, that's even more important, isn't it? Um, and in, ensure on health and wellbeing that you're offering a wide range of events. So it's inclusive. You've mentioned home workers, hi hybrid workers. That's really important. You don't want those people that aren't at head office, wherever that is, to be left out or to feel, well, I can't take part in that. You know, so that you're not sort of isolating any groups with, within, you, within your business. That's really important. And um, yeah, I suppose that's it on the health and well-being one. Uh, that was really successful for us. It wasn't difficult. It worked well. But there's some things that we've sort of picked up, I guess, on that. In terms of continuous improvement, that is strong culturally here um, because people feel safe that they can speak up and throw in suggestions or come up with ideas and solutions for things. They can raise their hand and voice their opinion without judgment I think what we wanted to do is capture formally some of these continuous improvement um, work that people were, were coming up with but the first thing you've got to do is get them to recognize what's 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 a piece of continuous improvement work mm -hmm. that's going to add value so they say oh no I just did that without thinking I've, I've changed this and I've done that but that's really good and that means x and that means y for the customer so we've talked to people a lot about that about capturing it which we've got a place now for that uh, so getting people to recognise what constitutes an improvement, get it captured and encouraging people to suggest improvements in the role. So, again, that's getting people to we call them pain points. What are the pain points in your role? What are you doing that might not add enough value? You know, maybe sending something out to a customer and it takes you two hours to produce, but you get very little back. So let's look at that. Is it adding value to them? Uh, is there something else we need to change to meet their needs? 
So continuous improvement uh, is, is a, a culture for us and, and we want people to feel that they can um, bring up ideas and now it's standard practice for us, but that's tricky to get people's mindset to change to, no, you can, you can change this. You don't have to wait for a manager or wait for an appraisal to suggest things. Let's talk, let's look at your role. What can we do better, quicker, faster? What can we do to pull out the pain points? Um, so that's a cultural change maybe, isn't it, for some businesses, mm -hmm. making sure people feel psychologically safe. Um, and I think on the stride front, you know, uh, I'm not on the books for Strive. It sounds like I can, but it was easy to implement. You, you know, you do worry with these things, but bringing them in, well, what we've got kind of works, but Strive was so much more professional and slicker for us, and it's future-proofing what we've got. We know it's bedded in. We've got it in place. Everybody can see the R&R &R and recognition, which they couldn't before. And I think it's helped. You always have a little bit of concern around an anonymity, and people do. So it's having the trust and reassuring people this is a system that's robust. And unless you want to um, say who you are, you don't need to do that. And we won't know who you are. Um, so that's been really powerful. And it's overcoming that. Some people have apprehension from historical where they've worked before, they've got experiences. And that's the same with any business. People are looking at where they've worked before and what, what's not gone so right. So it's undoing those uh, beliefs or, or things and getting people to understand we're not here to you know, pull anyone up on anything. We just want great ideas and thoughts and want you to feed into the business. So the anonymity uh, issue, uh, having Stribe has helped that. That's helped us to overcome that. Any, you know, any concerns around that? Yeah, I would say they're the, they're the main things. Yeah. Well, that was such a detailed answer. Thank you. And I think one thing I want to um, dig into a little bit is you've mentioned psychological safety a few times. And I think you know, I can see you guys have just a huge amount of it at Dave Sand from, um, you know, just the detail of answers that your colleagues are, are sharing on our tool in their surveys um, through the examples that you've shared on the webinar. And that is, um, it can be on the rarer side for family-led organizations as well. I think, you know, there's a huge amount of kind of personal ownership that comes when you're in um, a family business um, and, and psychological safety, I guess, doesn't always sit um, naturally within that. But how, and this is a difficult question, how how have you, how do you find that you've kind of created that that high level of psychological safety? I know it's very difficult sometimes to define exactly what, what that was, but it sounds like, um you guys have so much fun I know there'll be lots of people on this call right now sat there going how on earth have they have they done this we'd really love to know well we've been going since 1980 so we've had quite a bit, <laughs> we've had quite a bit of practice haven't we but I think it comes through you know building trust and you know we've talked about life happens that's really important not just post-covid we always had that in place People, you know, in the past, you wouldn't take your whole self to work. You'd have your, your, your work persona and you'd leave all that other stuff at the door and, and no one cared. Nobody wanted to know what, you know, that stays at the door. You're coming into work to do a job and this is how it used to be. Uh, but we've always, we've always, even when we had a small team to now, how people are at home and what's going on and life happens, events, you know. We don't have to name what those life events are, but we've all been there. Uh, life doesn't go your way and... And that affects you in the workplace as much as you like to think it doesn't, it does affect you. And so because we've been able to support people through those difficult times, whatever it may be, that builds up a trust mm -hmm. and an understanding that we are here for you as a whole person. It is important to us that you, you know, that you, you're feeling as good as you can do and you're supported as much as we can do in the workplace. So if you need us, we're here for you and we'll do what we can. And it's been fair and reasonable and treating people as humans, isn't it? So if you've been through that, which most of our people have at some point in their life, they come through that and, well, I can trust you and I can confide in you. And although I might be going through a dip and maybe I'm not performing so well for a little bit, but I'll come out the other side and people are, are loyal uh, and their loyalty goes both ways. You know, we expect a lot of our people, it sounds like it's some sort of, you know, um, wonderland of, you know, uh, you know, health and well-being and all of that, but it's a, it's a workplace and we're here to to perform as well. So there's, there's a balance, but uh, yeah, it's come over years really and just treating people as humans and making sure that your team leaders and your leaders have got to be accessible and supportive and approachable and 
they play such an important role. So your training of your leaders and making sure you've got the right people in place because one person's experience in one department might be different in another. And you might see that coming through your survey. Mm -hmm. You know, you, the, your people's experiences are different depending on who's looking after them. So, um, yeah, we've made sure we've got some really brilliant leaders here. Um, so it's not it's not easy, is it? But psychological safety impacts your engagement as well, doesn't it? If you, you know, you think you're sticking in a... A solution i've got this engagement platform in there great people can feed him but no one's going to use it if they're terrified and they don't trust the manager and they're worried and concerned so it all comes in it's all into interlinked yeah it's not easy no it's not and unfortunately there's not always just one quick and simple change that will magically fix everything um we i am gonna get into stribe um in a second because um in terms of the employee surveys that you're running with that software our software it is um there are a few really interesting things i think you will want to share but i think there's a couple of questions in the q a that i think will lead on really nicely to that and actually out of this psychological safety conversation so i think the first one is kind of around um you know requesting that feedback and i know you just touched on that a little bit but how um did you ever find that kind of trust was an issue when you know starting maybe your stripe surveys and how did you navigate all of that to gain momentum from colleagues about how they're and really getting that detail around how they're truly feeling yeah well um we had a demo from from your guys um which is nice it's not just coming from us they're often you know often hearing things from the leaders of the business it's nice to have somebody coming in externally to explain what it was all about, what the benefits were. And you had some really good, you know, verbatim examples from some really cool companies that have already signed up to it. Um, so that was really powerful, having your guys explain it to people. They had the chance firsthand in one of the re quarterly review meetings to, to ask any questions of the, the person that was presenting to us, any concerns and doubts. And you made it very clear how the system works the anonymity, anonymity side, easy for me to say, you know, that's really crucial, isn't it? And you explained the background to it and how it works. Um, and the fact that the teams, you know, because we're a small business, so immediately people are thinking, you'll work out who I am. And we're saying, well, no, because you only, you put people into teams of well, three and above or whatever it is, five and above or whatever it is. So it means that, you know, we, we won't know who you are unless you divulge that. And it's only as people... And, and you have to repeat that quite a bit. And we, we're talking to people, have you filled in your survey? You know, it's important that you've got a voice. We want to hear from you. You're important to us and your ideas are important. You can make a difference. And it's like, if you don't vote, you don't have a say. It's a little bit like that, you know? So we want you to be a part of the business and to take us forward and to be the best business we can, but we can only do it if everyone takes part. So we actually go for a hundred percent return. We're saying every person matters. Mm -hmm. um, and so we push that. We don't always get that, but we push for that. Um, so, yeah, it's explaining what the system does. And going back to that person, if someone's, you know, put the hand up and said, I still don't quite believe that. Well, yeah. let's have a look at it again. You know, there's no benefit to us knowing that Joe Bloggs put this bit of information in. We're more interested in what your concern is or what your idea is. Um mm -hmm. We'd like everybody not to be anonymous. We'd like, you know, encourage people to put your name against. You should feel comfortable in a business, put your name against it. If it's something you're passionate about, feel strongly about, why wouldn't you? So we do try and encourage people to do that. So, but no, it was briefed in a way that, yeah, I think I had one person that's still in the warehouse that said, I'm not sure about this. So, you know, we had a chat with him and said, look, believe us, this is how it works. And so, yeah, we're getting responses yeah and I think that's the key isn't it it's it's repetition it's little and often and it's it's kind of proving proving what you're saying is actually true once that survey comes through you come out in the wash like you're sharing those results you're acting on them and you're proving that there's no there's no consequences that come yes. as a result of um of participating and you know it sounds like you have um a culture where folk in between those surveys are happy to kind of come up and and, and share and 
um, give feedback as well, which is lovely. You've mentioned you aim for a 100% response rate. And I know, <laughs> I don't know if we've got that there for you yet, but I know you guys are, so, I think you're one of our top customers for response rates. All of oh, our customers do do generally get um, pretty good response rates, but you guys are um, definitely in the, in the top um, in terms of your high response rates. And they are really essential as well for creating that meaningful change from employee surveys. Like you say, if you don't get responses from the majority, how can you create change that represents those people? Um, so I would really love to hear, and I'm sure our audience will too, about what approaches DateSound have, have used to kind of really achieve those great responses for your employee surveys. <laughs> well, one of them is definitely pizza. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, our guys, if, you know, we occasionally buy everybody lunch. Um, but yeah, we, we have used that to say, you know what, if you can respond to this and let us know how you feel, then lunch is on us. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but obviously we can't do that every time. Uh, mm -hmm. But it, it is, it, it definitely helps. And it's, reinforcing the why it's important for everybody to complete the survey and why we want everybody to be heard um it's important like claire said the fact that we've only got 30 people everyone counts um and everybody's uh, opinions uh, matter so we do want to hear from everybody um it's in highlighting the importance of the value of every single person's contribution and um, all the feedback is valuable and no there is no silly idea so every person's opinion ideas count um and then we consider obviously how we reach out to people so we've got obviously the warehouse and dispatch team they are limited on emails and um, they do obviously have emails but they're not always on them so um we have had to sort of adjust our way of communicating with different departments so um, obviously with people in the office, it's very easy. We get them on email, mobile, um, but with people down, downstairs, um, we have to sort of do a face-to-face -face approach or a poster with a QR code on it for, the, for when they have their morning meetings. Um, so then um, whoever runs that morning meeting, we can just say, um, you know, you can scan that code and fill it in very quickly before you go back, back into the warehouse and, to try and encourage people to be involved in, in everything that we do. Um, and we even put them on like the toilet doors or the kitchen doors or the fridge. Yes, yeah, the fridge. here's the QR code. <laughs> Don't miss it. <laughs> yeah. um, but it works, doesn't it? Yeah, it's making um, it, is it, sorry, Amy, yeah, it's, it's making fine. it, again, it's the employee experience, making it as easy as possible for your people to feed into you. Don't put any barriers in the way. Make it as easy as possible and so, yeah. you'll increase your, your responses. You've got to put it on the fridge. You've got to put it on yeah, the fridge. We'll we know everything goes in it. So, <laughs> um, And then also avoiding holiday periods to send out surveys. So obviously in the summer, everybody's away. You want to try and do it when you've got less people on holiday. So obviously from my point of view, I sort of do a lot of the Stripe admin whenever I send out a survey and I do the HR admin as well. So I know when holidays are being taken and when the busiest periods are holidays um, and when you know everybody is in work so I can see when the best time is to send out a survey so we sort of base it on that as well um, which which is definitely definitely helped getting more um, response rates as well um, and we obviously also encourage people to speak up and use their voice um, that we do regularly daily um, if we can so um, you know we want everybody to have a say we want everybody to be involved um, and then upon responding to the feedback we make sure that it's prompt positive well thought out um, and even you know even if it's something we couldn't do it's something that we are working on or something that we can look at in the future um, but yeah um, as, responding to the feedback as quickly as we can is is definitely something that we we always have have on our on our plate, don't we? We just make sure that we, we get it out as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And making sure you credit, you know, if you get some real gems in there, make sure you credit that person and if that with their um with their um say so, you know, that's a brilliant that will make such a difference in that can can we quote you as 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 the person that suggested it and you know some people are shy and they don't want that but other people say yeah, yeah, you know, it's good. And is there anything else you do in terms of just making, because it is 
one of like we always talk about actually like with surveys particularly it's after the survey is finished that, that, that it really makes the difference in terms of your response rates and your buying for the next one and um you know what is what is your secret sauce to making sure that employees feel like their feedback is valued and they can see that it leads to those tangible changes every time yeah i guess we've all been on the receiving end of a survey haven't we and uh, you, you take the time to fill them in and and if you hear nothing it's a bit disappointing so the worst thing you can do is send one out and don't respond or be slow to respond it's really damaging and it just people will just be closed off you've you've you've, you've damaged your reputation and you know you've gone against everything people are taking the time and effort to think fill it in so respond to every bit of feedback say thank you thanks for filling that in it's taking your time appreciate your feedback and make sure like amy said if you can't um see something through to a re resolution or, or or to fruition make sure that you say why not if not you know not just no we can't do that computer says no so that's important and, and if there are some quick wins to be had we've found that you, you see something that comes back that's easy we can do that let's get that done so any quick wins jump on those get them get them done as quickly as possible uh, and then you can feed back through through stripe we've said before about r and r for exceptional gains so it's something to put a real gem through make sure they get that recognition for it and use we said you did um you said we did through stripe um is really good because we're, we're saying this is a suggestion and this is the response and you can be quite quick with that really we, we've we've done that um um several times and uh, making sure that any r and i is done through a company meeting or sh shout about it let other people know and then people that may be a bit quieter think actually i can see they are acting on these things and they are rewarding and recognizing it so I'm, I'm, I feel confident to raise something next time. So you want everybody to get involved, don't you? So it's it's making sure people know it's valued, that you are going to act on it and you'll do what you can. And if you if you can't do it now, explain, I, ca I can't do it yet, but we're working on it. So it's being transparent and open with your people. Yeah. That builds on trust, doesn't it? And confidence and yeah, helps, helps. Really, it really does. And you've mentioned timely responses and they are so important in all of this. Um, and it can be really tricky to get it right as well, uh, particularly, you know, if you've got a slightly more complex topic. How do you make sure that from your own, from your own surveys that you're running that you can respond quickly and effectively to those results when they come through? So we, we plan ahead as far as we can um, and we factor in uh, time to go through responses and be ready with resources to implement results we kind of get ahead of ourselves in what we think may come out of the survey and we've already got resources as a backup to uh, you know ready to implement um, for, for that change um, and the timeliness is important uh, lapses in time without any communication following a survey is incredibly damaging so we want to make sure that people are being heard and they're not waiting and waiting months and months on end to you know have a response or an, or an answer to something so when we do the you said we did um it could be a week or it could be two weeks maybe even three weeks after um that we say right we're working on this um we're gonna we haven't responded quite yet because we are working on it but we are going to put something in place for this um for example we did like um a volunteering questionnaire survey and um, whether we you know we asked people whether they would want to do specific volunteering for specific causes um, and what came on top we basically uh, are in the process of, of still planning that um, um, which should be going ahead in the next couple of months um, but at the time we did the survey and um, we basically did a you said we did and said right this is something we are working on we're going to look into it we're going to get it actioned and um, just just look out on your inbox. Um, so yeah, so we are even even though you know we did the survey and we weren't able to respond straight away to it, we were able to tell people that we have got this planned and we are going to do it. Um, we're just looking into it, we're sorting out numbers, coverage of the office and everything like that. So there's a lot of things to consider when doing it, but um, it is something that you know has definitely helped when people know that it's coming up and rather than just leaving it silent you know, people know it's happening they know it's being worked on and i think that's what people look forward to is knowing that there's going to be an outcome to it that's awesome um just and I add think... to that very quickly sorry lucy to interrupt um one of the things we did was um 
at one of our quarterly meetings, that's everyone in together. One of the first things we're looking at is the financial side. So we're letting people know how we're performing, where we're at. And we asked for feedback straight after that with Stride because we can do it. Was it too long? Were the slots too long? Did you understand it? What could you, what could you, what did you struggle with? And about 10 people said, could we know a bit more about the finances? Some of the terminology, you know, we're showing them how we're performing. Don't assume that they're getting it, that they're understanding some of these terminologies. So our uh, CFO let, put on a session, uh, you know, within two weeks, we had 10 people there and it was a bit of a question and answer. So what does this mean? How does that work? How can I impact that? And and that was just through having Stride and being able to get that feedback really quickly of what worked well and what didn't work well. So that was a good example, I think. Well, yeah. I just love that as well because it's such a simple one and almost so simple that a lot of us would forget to even check that um you know uh, is what we're presenting it's not in these people's day-to-day like yeah. they probably haven't you know I don't think I've had a lesson on like financial literacy in a business ever <laughs> so you know it's so important to make sure that it, there's no assumption assumptions there that um that you really are just asking those broader questions as well and pulling through that feedback um, from employees. And um, we've got probably time for just one or two more questions. If anyone wants to try and sneak something into the Q&A, do do it now. But um, we will share Amy and Claire's uh, LinkedIn's with everyone afterwards. Just if you do have any follow up questions, um, they um, I'm sure will be happy to answer that way but Chrissy just has one on measurable change which is something that we've kind of spoken about throughout and she's just asked did you notice any measurable changes once you introduced Stripe um, i.e any metrics that you've monitored before or after or comparisons to before the introduction of Stripe oh, that's, that's a big one, one isn't it <laughs> that's a big one uh, definitely we've mentioned shout outs that's 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 gone up and yeah people are much more vocal about recognising what people have done well and acknowledging the support that they get. You know, a small team of 30, you're covering each other's roles when you have people on holiday, you're not wearing one hat. We expect a lot of people. So it's good that people get that recognition and they know I'm valued and my colleagues mm-hmm. value me and this is why they value me. So that's gone up for sure. We used to do an annual, what your colleagues love about you, which was our way of doing that really. So you'd get an, 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 an you know anonymous feedback on your desk in an envelope. You'd say, Claire, we love you the way you support us with this, or we love your happy attitude, or your, whatever it is, and you'd get it anonymously. So that that's um, yeah. It, instead of waiting every year to get that, it's there and live, and it's t- really timely. Yeah, we still do that. The the you, what you love about your colleague, um, but yeah, it was more manual, so we we didn't really have anything specifically in place it was just kind of like an email or here here and there wasn't it yeah but now now we can see it on stride we get so much more <laughs> we never did get that much before so we know that it's definitely gone up with it excuse me an engagement has in, increased in that you know the engagement of one another people engaging with it one other has gone up um it's just a feel factor around it it's just positive um excuse me losing my voice <laughs> So we didn't really measure engagement and stuff. We were looking at, you know, at surveys that we're sending out. We know how many are responding. So that hasn't changed, but the fact it's all in one place has improved things. Um, all of the resources that we have are all in Stribe as well. For, for an employee, that's better. They know they can go there and, and get up to date with things. Um, but I suppose for a company of our side, it's more fun to use his Stripe as well. So I suppose <laughs> that's why people are engaging on using it. It's accessible. It's easy to use. It's fun. You get a little, you know, celebration yes. of <laughs> emoji when you, you give someone feedback and things like that. So I guess, I guess to summarise that, it's probably employees, I guess it's more accessible for them. Um, it's improved like their experience when they're sending things like shout outs or doing the yeah. surveys, but it's more had an impact for you guys on the admin side of stuff, you know, met maybe with your analysis, how you're putting yeah, those surveys. It's that kind of side of things that's really supported you um on your employee engagement journey. Definitely um, producing the surveys is easier. Much easier. Yeah. Yeah, and Sarah has just stuck one in, so we're going to ask this and then we'll finish up. How do you make sure that shout outs are being received evenly through the business? So people who work remotely or are in standalone roles or I guess for you guys in the warehouse as well. 
Yeah, I mean, you can you can monitor them, can't you? You can see how many people are getting. We did this with our manual process, didn't we? We were making sure that everyone got some positive feedback. Yeah. Um, we go to like the senior leadership team. We sort of, I, I've checked in with, with them and, and asked if there's anything they would like to bring forward um, with someone that's, you know, gone, you know, gone above and beyond to give them a shout out, just encouraging it really. Um, and just making sure that, you know, those people who are doing a good job are being recognised for it. And, you know, it's just being transparent with it and making sure that it is seen by everybody as well. So You can see through Stride, through the groups that you set up, can't you? You can see you've got your sales and marketing team, let's say, and you've got your production team. So you can go in and see if there's any gaps mm-hmm. there. But if someone isn't getting any, I don't know, why is that? If you've got a lot in a particular team, why is that? You know, some people are more on it than others, aren't they? So you might see a certain manager maybe isn't recognising people as they should be. So that's quite powerful, isn't it? You can look at that and go, hey, let's have a chat with this this person and see what's going on here. So, um, yeah, and it makes sure remote workers, they're all over it, the remote workers. We've got people on the road, salespeople, yeah. uh, people that work from, from home that we don't see very often. But they're part, that brings them in. Yeah. Yeah. That's lovely. And that's exactly what we recommend as well, um, is it, it, it just takes that little bit of management. Um, we do have a dashboard, like you say, Claire, that kind of yeah. highlights who is or isn't sending them. And maybe the teams are a little bit lower than others. So it's just about that internal communications and just working with the managers or perhaps um, kind of other people leaders in the team just to just to highlight those gaps and um, make sure they're putting stuff in place to communicate um, how they can improve. Um, we will end it there. Thank you. I think I could probably keep going for another hour or two, but thank you so much, Claire and Amy and everyone at home um, that's hung on just as we ran over a little bit. You've made this webinar really amazing and I'm so grateful um, to you, Claire and Amy, and also everyone that sent in these questions. You will receive a little email from us that includes a link to the recording of this webinar and a couple of links um, for resources that will be useful for you as well, just off of the back of this conversation. And before I forget, do post any takeaways that you've had on social media. It always generates some really interesting conversations between folk. Um, You know, feel free to tag Amy, Claire, myself. These sessions really do live beyond the hour and the few minutes that we've spent together today. So it's really well worth doing and it makes the biggest difference to us to get the word out as well. Thank you so much again. Um, We really look forward to seeing you all on the next one. And Claire and Amy, I will speak to you both very, very soon. Thanks, everyone. Have an amazing day. Thank Thank you. Bye.